So in this video, we're gonna compare two different trail leg movements in the backswing. A straightening trail leg to where it gets gradually straighter as you get up to the top of your backswing versus a flexed or braced trail leg where the flexion and the bentness of your trail leg stays the same as you go back up to the top of the backswing. So we're gonna see what one is gonna be better for your game. So I'm Jonathan Chan with J-Chan Golf. Let's dive right into it. So let's jump straight into it here. I'm gonna hit two balls. One of them, I'm gonna hit with a straightening trail leg in a backswing, and the other, I'm gonna keep that trail leg flexed. So here's the straighter leg one. Let's see how we do with it. And now let's hit a one with a flexed trail leg. So let's talk about the bent trail leg first, so the second swing we did. Now, when we're looking at those, the first thing that I see is a lack of turn of the body. And that's what I could physically feel when I was doing those swings. I really couldn't feel like I could turn that much. And someone who doesn't have good mobility, that's a big deal breaker for a type of movement in the backswing. If it stops my turn, I'm not gonna do it because I'm gonna be losing power. And that's just one of the things. So you can see by keeping that trail leg flexed, that is now really restricting the range of motion I can do with my hips. The less I turn with the hips, the less I'm going to be able to turn with my body. So not the best for golfers who aren't extremely athletically gifted. So, of course, what that's going to cause? A little bit of a lack of power. Of course, we're not going to be hitting the ball that far. We're not getting the potential turn and coil up as we could do there. But two, when we're not turning, we also can't get our hands deep enough behind us. So having the hands deep behind you, all that means, or having more hand depth, is the hand's been a little bit more behind us here. So more depth means more behind, less depth means more on top. So we don't want our hands being ridiculously behind us. We just want the hands being deep enough behind here to where my hands are over kind of like my ankle or heel region, to where then I can turn in a downswing and the club will naturally fall on path. So if I don't have enough hand depth, the club is actually going to start to fall and go out in front of me. And then I'm going to have to compromise my pivot to get back into it, which we're going to get into. So why that doesn't, you know, vibe with good depth is because when we rotate in the golf swing, the hands follow where we rotate. So if we're restricting our rotation in the backswing, the hands will try to go vertically up. That's just what they're going to do unless you physically try to pull them in around. That's why hand depth is important because Wherever you rotate, the hands follow. When we rotate in the downswing, the hands follow. So if you don't have too much depth, out they go in front of you. So the turn factor, lack of turn, less distance, and also lack of turn means not too much natural depth to where you're gonna be struggling with your club path. Quite often the time, slicey shots, but not necessarily. Because also, what keeping that trail leg flexed, which we're gonna see from here from those slow-mos, is our hips will stay extremely level throughout our golf swing, especially our backswing. So when the two knees there are staying very level with each other, because that's what they're going to do when they're staying quite flexed, that means the two hip bones are going to be staying very level. So as I'm turning back, or trying to turn back with that flex trail leg, I'm going to have extremely level hip tilt. So when I have level hip tilt, that's going to make it very hard for me to turn correctly in my downswing. So the thing that happens quite often when our hips are too level is we'll start to move in our downswing and the hips will just want to slide. They will just slide towards the target there. So when we slide towards the target, that will cause us to stall out our rotation. That will cause us to really excessively side bend coming into the golf ball, which will neutralize that lack of depth at the top of the backswing, but do it, it's doing it via compensating move of hip sliding and then really side bending really early, which just means you're gonna end up flipping through the golf ball with those hands. Not a good thing. Your rotation isn't gonna be what's governing the club face. And two, you can imagine that speed that's happening here, all that side bend is gonna put a tremendous force and pressure into your lower back. A player who does this, albeit an absolutely incredible player, is Jason Day. Jason Day has this pattern, very flexed trail leg. He'll turn up to the top of the backswing, very level hip tilt, very, you know, flexed trail leg, slide his first movement will be, a little slide like this, because that's what the hips want to do when they are very level. And then he'll tilt back here. And then of course, Jason Day can make it work, but what is he suffering with? 
really bad back issues. Another player who suffers from that, Michelle Wee. Keeps that trail leg extremely flexed, extremely braced. Same things happen to her, a lot of back issues. So if you want a golf swig, that's gonna you know, hurt yourself. Maybe struggle with a slice from time to time and just general lack in power and just loss of control club face. You can do the flex trail leg. But if you're very athletic, you can make it work, but you will run into some back issues down the line. So let's have a look at that trail leg straightening now. So we're gonna see a lot of opposites happen from these two slow-mo angles. So first thing is you can see I get a lot more turn up to the top of my backswing. So straightening the trail leg doesn't necessarily give you more turn. It more just enables you to turn freer. It doesn't really stop you like a flex trail leg will. So then you can focus on turning your hips and you will naturally get that more turn. Now, straightening the trail leg, if you free up your lower body's movement, will actually naturally happen when you try to turn your hips. So, that's a good thing we know, okay? It's not gonna stop us from having a good turn. So that means it's gonna really influence you to have a nice full backswing, pick up some good speed, of course, be hitting the ball more as far as you can do. And two, because we know we're getting more turn, the hands are gonna be traveling more around us because of the hands following our rotation. We're gonna have better depth at the top, which means we're gonna have far better control of path. So more distance from a freer turn, better path, so straighter shots as well, already sounding better. So the tilting aspect of it, of course, that's different as well. That's completely opposite. So we can see how when with the, you know, the flex trail leg, the hips stayed very, very level. But now because that trail leg is straightening, it's extending is what it's doing. So when it's extending, that's the right side is actually slightly moving up, left side is moving down. So that's creating this kind of inclination towards the ground here. Now, that's good for very many reasons because we know in the goal swing, we need to be tilted to be able to hit the ball. The ball is on the ground. So one, it helps us just make good contact without compromising our pivot. So, so as we said, with the trail leg staying flexed, the hips would be very level, cause us to slide. Now with the trail leg straightening, causes the lead side to be low, then that encourages us to move pressure into the lead side and not necessarily hip slide there. So when we're moving pressure into that lead side, you can see our upper body and lower body is gonna stay very nicely connected to each other. One, that's gonna make it better for your ball striking because if your upper and lower body are staying more connected for you know, the first real three quarters of the downswing there until we get into impact, that's gonna make low point way easier for you to control because you're not excessively side bending too early, which is gonna be of a detriment to you. And because you won't be excessively side bending too early, hip tilt and maintaining that, like we said, keeps both upper body and lower body connected to each other that helps with rotation massively. So you're gonna have a much easier time just to continue to turn through that ball very, very nicely. Hips and just tilts in general, massive component to rotation in the golf swing. So you're gonna have a freer moving pivot and you're gonna have a pivot that you don't need to compromise to be able to hit the golf ball. You wouldn't need to at all have to do anything there to be able to get yourself onto the golf ball. Just turn through there, those tilts will be maintained and you're gonna hit much better for your golf shots without even trying. So as you can tell there, I'm very much in favor of straightening up that trail leg. So that's obviously because it's you're gonna hit the ball further, you're gonna hit the ball straighter, you're gonna rotate better. It's just gonna be generally just a better song. It's safer for you as well. It's much safer for your lower back. But I know a lot of you have probably been told out there not to straighten up that trail leg because it was, you know, keeping that flexed again was a very, 90s and 2000s type of instruction there. Bracing that trail leg, turning into it, the resistance model type of thing. So we know from golfers that have done that a lot, Jason Day, for example, not the best way to swing the golf club for health wise. You can still play good, but quite erratic, quite dangerous. Now, partially true of not wanting to straighten it up because one, you can't straighten it up to complete lockout. Because if you straighten your leg to complete lockout, you'll feel your leg physically lock out when you do that, makes it then very hard to reflex the leg coming into the downswing. So what you want to do, you want to be able to straighten that trail leg just before lockout. Now you might be thinking that's a hard thing to do. Your body won't want to lock that leg out anyway. So it will stop just before that lockout. You won't have to think of it because if we straighten it just short of lockout, then we can still reflex that leg in the downswing nicely, get our pressure and into our lead side, keep those tilts down, rotate through the golf ball, all those nice things. So before I end it here, let's talk about a good drill you can do to be able to feel this leg straightening as you turn back. 
what you need is a golf club. And what you need to do with a golf club, you put the club head side underneath your lead leg. And then with where the grip side is, you're just putting it over your trail leg just like this and kind of like holding the handle like that. So what I want you to do is just do some little hip turns, but pull this backwards as you're going. So pulling it away and behind you as you're turning. Just like these little movements here. That's going to help you feel that lead leg there, or the trail leg, sorry. That's going to, you've got to feel that straighten and extend a little bit. So for you guys out there who really struggle with that flex trail leg, this is going to be a brilliant one for you just to feel it. As soon as you feel it, you're going to be able to replicate it a lot more there. So guys, if you found this video helpful, of course, click that like button. If you want more golf instruction just like this, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button too, to be notified every time I put out a video. So there's a little comparison on those two trail leg movements. You can decide what one you want to do, and then you'll be able to play a lot better golf because of it.